Let's just jump right in with a research situation. Suppose that ordinary adults blink an average of 14 times per minute with a standard deviation of 2.6 and that this is considered known and correct and the distribution is normal in shape. Now let's say there's an eye drop medication made to treat allergy symptoms. The question is, do people who use the eye drops blink a different number of times? First we have this nice known population for blinks. The null hypothesis is that people who use the eye drops blink just like in this picture. Some people are going to blink more than 14, some less than 14, but the mean for the population of people who use the eye drops is 14. That's it. The null hypothesis is that people who use the eye drops are just like everybody else with their blinking. The alternative hypothesis is that people who use the eye drops do not blink like everybody else. People who use the eye drops blink a different number of times per minute than ordinary people do. Notice there is not a lot of detail in this alternative hypothesis. In fact, all the alternative hypothesis is saying here is that people who use the eye drops are different than ordinary people we already know about. The people who use the eye drops have a population mean of something that is not 14. Let's suppose we have a sample of 30 people who use the eye drops to test them out for us. Aren't they nice? The sample used the eye drops and their sample score was 15.2 blinks. Well, it's not 14, but is that sample mean different enough that we can actually say it's significant? The hypothesis is about an entire group of interest, the population, not just these 30 people. If we just wanted to know about these 30 individuals, we wouldn't need to do hypothesis testing. We would just gather the data and we'd be done. We wish we could know about the entire group of interest. If we had a genie or something, it'd be awesome to just know how all people will react to the eye drops. That's not reality. All we have to go on is a sample mean. So this is going to be a little game of probability for us to make some sort of statement about all people who may use the eye drops when we only know about 30 of them for sure. We do know that all people blink an average of 14 times per minute, standard deviation of 2.6. We are looking at what is known. This isn't up for debate or challenge. This isn't wrong. Standard deviation tells us roughly the average amount that scores differ from the population mean. All people's blink times are on this picture somewhere, spread out from the left to the right, above or below the 14. And on average, a person's score will vary from 14 by 2.6 on this scale. If I just randomly picked some guy and counted how many times he blinked, just suppose he wouldn't mind that I did that, he wouldn't have to blink exactly 14 times a minute to be a normal person, right? There's definitely variation here because people are different. Back to our study. Here we have a sample score that's a mean for 30 people. If we found 30 random people and measured everyone's blinks and got a sample mean for them, it would actually be closer to the 14 than just any one random guy would be. Because if we had 30 people, the extremes would probably cancel one another out. Actually, if we had a sample of 100 people, their sample mean would probably be even closer to the 14. Because more people makes for less error as there's more opportunity for extreme scores in the sample to cancel one another out. A sample of 100 people still probably won't have a mean of exactly 14, but it would probably be closer than when the sample has 30 people. Okay, whether you understand that or not, let's use it. Here's the distribution we know about for sure. We have a sample mean for 30 people. We need to know if we took 30 people at a time from this known population, and we just kept doing that, Getting a bunch of sample means for ordinary people, how much on average would our sample means be spread out? That's going to help us put our actual sample mean for the 30 people who use the eye drops into perspective, because we'll have something legitimate to compare them against. This is the formula that tells us on average how spread out sample means of 30 people will be on the blinking distribution. 
it's the standard deviation and in this case it's our standard error of the mean. It's called that because all we really, really want to know in research is the thing we can never know, which is the population mean for our entire group of interest. Super. This is now a good comparison distribution. It's a distribution of sample means for 30 people at a time on blinking. Now we have something useful. The null hypothesis, remember, is that the population mean for people who use eye drops is 14. That doesn't mean every sample of 30 people will have an average of 14 blinks. The sample means will vary on average by this much, the standard error, because people are different. And this is where we can make an assessment about our eye drop people. If the null hypothesis is true, our sample for the 30 eye drop people will be in some reasonable place on this picture. I am shading in the most extreme 5% of this picture. 95% of all sample scores are not in that critical region. 5% is like 1 out of 20. So 1 out of 20 samples is in the shaded region. 19 out of 20 samples are not that unusual. The probability of getting a sample of 30 ordinary people that have a mean this unusual is less than 5%. Does it ever happen? Uh, yeah, but it happens less than 5% of the time. And we do have to draw the line somewhere. All right, what's our sample mean? Sample mean for our 30 eye drop people is 15.2. Is that unusual? And look at the picture. We figured this out to be the null hypothesis situation for sample means of 30 people for blinking. And if the null hypothesis were true, our eye drop people would be in some reasonable place on this distribution, but they're not. They're definitely unusual. They are in the most extreme 5% of the distribution. And remember how normal distributions work with probabilities and percents and proportions, those P words. Our eye drop people's sample score is here. It's unlikely that a sample of 30 people would score 15.2 on this just by chance. P is less than 0.05. To some extent, sample means are different from one another just because people are different. That's why we drew this picture to begin with. But even considering how different people are from one another, this sample score is still unusual. It's not likely to be this extreme just by chance. 19 out of 20 times, the sample's not going to be this extreme just by chance. The null hypothesis was the population mean for people who use the eye drops would be 14, just like everybody else. Based on this study, though, it's not. People who use the eye drops average a different number of blinks per minute. This is when we reject the null hypothesis. This sample is just too unusual. We are going to give some credit for this observed difference to the eye drops. From this study, people who use the eye drops blink a different number of times than ordinary people. This is a conclusion, a decision we've made with the information available. Sometimes, even though we did everything right, our decision is wrong. It has to do with that probability value. Remember that up to 5% of the time, a sample score will just happen to fall in the most extreme 5% of the distribution anyway, by definition. We made a conclusion here to say that people who use the eye drops are different, but it's possible that the sample of people we gave the eye drops to just happened to have a few weird people in it. And maybe the eye drops don't actually make a difference on blinking in reality. It's always possible that a sample score is really just unusual by chance. And maybe we say something's different when in reality we just happen to have gotten that weird one out of every 20 samples. That's called a decision error. And in this situation it would be a type 1 decision error. You should review this video a second time if anything is unclear. Also, keep in mind that hypothesis testing for the single sample t-test follows the same logic as the z-test, just with estimating population variance from the sample. Otherwise, it works like this. The next topic you should review is decision errors, as this mini-video lecture on introduction to hypothesis testing is done.